Good Sunday morning, Northeast Ohio, on this 12th day of January. It was actually on this date, back in 1991, that Congress voted to give then-President George H.W. Bush the authority to wage war against Iraq. This was the first Gulf War. Fast forward 29 years and everything old is new again, but this time Congress voting this week to restrict President Trump's ability to take military action against Iran. This, of course, following a week of rising tensions between the two countries after the killing of Irani General Qasem Soleimani and the retaliatory strike against those bases in Iraq. In Toledo on Thursday, the president defended his actions against Soleimani and in not notifying Congress. Soleimani was actively planning new attacks and he was looking very seriously at our embassies and not just the embassy in Baghdad. But we stopped him and we stopped him quickly and we stopped him cold. But Senator Sherrod Brown, among those in the Senate who said the case the administration laid out for them following the attack, didn't add up. With about 95 of my colleagues, I, I listened to a briefing from administration officials, Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, CIA, and a number of my colleagues in both parties grumbled about the president's people lying to us. Their people weren't telling the truth, and I want to make sure we hold them accountable. And while Iran hung over the president's visit to Toledo, it was indeed a campaign stop. It marked the 15th time the president has traveled to Ohio since taking the oath of office, outpacing his predecessor, President Obama, at this stage of his first term by three. And you can expect those trips to only continue, as President Trump knows full well no Republican has ever won the White House without winning Ohio. In 2016, President Donald Trump carried Ohio by more than seven points over Hillary Clinton. And to win it again, he'll be leaving nothing to chance. That's why he's not campaigning in one of the deep red counties that went for him four years ago, but one of the blue ones in Lucas County. The reason? It is surrounded by counties he carried that four years earlier had gone to President Obama. ABC News political director Rick Klein. Started looking at the suburbs and the exurbs of this country. That's where the battle lines will, will be, be drawn across the nation. Uh, and Ohio in particular. And, and the president and his team, they've done a lot of data analysis that suggests that they need to recreate the same kind of dynamics, the same kind of map as last time. And that means those areas uh, in and around Toledo are critical in this election. And Cuyahoga and surrounding counties fall into that category as well. Polls show that support remains strong for the president in rural parts of the state. So the tactic is to try to make inroads into areas where Democrats have done well in the past and to do it while those Democrats are out campaigning for the nomination in other parts of the country. Well, we are just over two months away from the Ohio primary and just over a month away from the start of early voting. Who will be on the ballot here was made official this week. And if Democrat Andrew Yang is to win the state in March, he's going to have to do it by write-in vote. He didn't make the list. The Andrew Yang campaign collected close to 3,000 signatures, nearly three times the number needed to get on the primary ballot. But state law requires those petitions the people sign to state who the candidate is and the office they are seeking. In a statement, Secretary of State Frank LaRose said by their own admission, the Yang campaign failed to do that. A similar scenario will also keep Democrat John Delaney off the primary ballot. Who made the cut in Ohio? 11 Democrats alphabetically. Michael Bennett, Joe Biden, Michael Bloomberg, Cory Booker, Pete Buttigieg, Tulsi Gabbard, Amy Klobuchar, Deval Patrick, Bernie Sanders, Tom Steyer, and Elizabeth Warren. In many years, the race for the nomination can be close to decided by the time we even get to Ohio, especially this year with Super Tuesday coming two weeks before on March 3rd and including the largest state in the country this year, California meaning more than a third of the country will be voting on that day. But in the key early states, the latest CBS YouGov polls this week are showing a literal tie in Iowa and a very close race in New Hampshire. So a split of states early on could turn into the setting for Super Tuesday, where Michael Bloomberg and his multi-million dollar media push, which includes Ohio, will come into play. Now, on the Republican side, former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld also failed to make the primary ballot, meaning President Trump will face no primary opposition in Ohio in March. And as an example of his focus beyond those early states, Michael Bloomberg took his campaign this week to Akron, picking up the endorsement of Mayor Dan Horrigan and touting his all-in economy program, creating job factories. These factories aren't traditional factories that build something physical. Uh, they create investments and build on economic strengths and existing communities. And we're not trying to invent the wheel, but since this is Akron, I probably should <laughs> clarify and say we're not trying to reinvent the tire either. And look for the pace of these candidate visits to only increase as we get closer to the state St. Patrick's Day primary. With Democracy 2020, I'm John Kasich. Enjoy your Sunday.